Remind. Boom. The song is a certified bop. <laughs> I can't do this with <laughs> I think that Remind is my favorite of our songs to listen to. It is really, really fun because it has this feel of this kind of suave James Bond meets R&B sort of feel, which I don't feel that cool, but I think that Jeremy, when we were producing this song, helped make it that cool. I remember hearing you play it on the guitar like a lot before I even knew what you were doing or where it was going. Yeah, I remember, this was one that we used to jam in the kitchen. Yeah, this was a kitchen song. Yeah. This also to... was a ukulele song at first. Yeah, it. I think it did actually take a long time to write because you had the idea for a long time and it was just kind of a song that we'd jam together at home. And then it kind of morphed into a song over time, I think. I've been looking for the bright side I've been walking on a tight line Remind is probably one of our more introspective songs. Some of our songs we write in the second person, like we're directing them to another one, but Remind is very much looking in. It's very personal. I think that Remind in some ways is the flip side of the coin to the song Wild Edge. If Wild Edge is us calling out to someone who has forgotten hope and seen themselves past the point of maybe being reached by hope, Remind is maybe the inner dialogue of that person, which in the terms of the song, I think was very much me when I was writing the song. No, but if I gotta turn off my ear, if it was like, oh, this is hard, like, no, no. 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 We had originally written this when we were on like a family vacation in Seattle because we took along a ukulele, which we packed the ukulele in a bunch of Peter's diapers, which was awesome and worked very well. But I remember Peter was super colicky when he was born. And so we were also at this spot where we felt really stressed. And I remember that when he would be napping on this family vacation, I would like go into the backyard and I just had this, like, I've been looking for the bright side. I've been walking on a tight line. Like kind of this feeling of, of a lot of tension. But I guess, yeah, we did jam on this song. So that's been a long while. time, actually, that, because that was right after Peter was born. Yeah, and here we are. 2019. And now he's like 25 and pays Wait, taxes. Wait, no, that's not right. 2021. <laughs> wow, you just forgot <laughs> when Peter was born. <laughs> anyway, oh that God. probably won't make it on 2019 is when we got our kids. 2019 is when we got our cats, and they are, uh, you know, they're up there with Peter. <laughs> They're up there. Uh, also, the diapers were unused diapers, just to yes, be clear. Yes, yes, to be clear, we did not use used diapers. I remember actually writing a lot of the lyrics when I was at my old job, and I used to work at a machine shop, and I remember walking and, and a lot of the writing that I do is is not, I rarely sit down to write a song. Whenever I come up with a melody or lyrics, a lot of times it's I'm driving somewhere or I'm working on something else, which sometimes feels very lazy. Like I don't really feel like I sit down and, and have this beautiful writer's haven where I craft a song. But I think that sometimes that that kind of natural life element I like how that flavors our songs because a lot of times the lyrics that we're writing or the melody we're coming up with is something that like hits us as we're in the middle of of the rest of life, which I think that's kind of where a lot of mute a lot of music is meant to be situated is in the context of regular life. <laughs> I 
picture like a bevel dig inside my brain, wrestle with the devil but I act so tame. Kind of this picture of, a lot of times I really try to stay composed and, and have this picture of looking like my life is put together. But a lot of times that exerts a lot of pressure that Jesus doesn't put on me. Like Jesus holds out this invitation, you know, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. And I think a lot of times we try to keep the Lord at arm's length in order to keep our composure. You know, we only come to Jesus for rest when we admit like, <laughs> I need rest. And so I think in some ways this song feels like a, a confession. We had come out with just kind of a bedroom acoustic version and that was like slow, I sang the lead on the whole song, but this was, I think, the first song that during the recording week, Jeremy was like, all right, Abby, I, I want you to step up to the mic and, and take one of these verses. Take it from Graham. Don't let him sing it all. And that actually is legitimately my favorite moment in the whole album is, is your verse. Because like the combination of your really like dusky alto singing over Jeremy, just like laying it down on the electric bass. That was really cool. I remember we were like, oh yeah, like we had some bass ideas and Jeremy like very kindly, very humbly kind of just like took the bass and was like, here, let me try something. And then just proceeded to literally light the bass on fire with how amazingly he played it. It was so cool. Abby and I were just like, Cool. We're not a bassist. Thought we were. Definitely are not. <laughs> Anyways. I was really excited about the fade out at the end. I just think the world needs more fade outs. The world needs more fade outs. When you've got a good thing, don't end it hard. Just keep the party going. <laughs> that was a song remind. Hope you enjoy. I'm looking on the